Hey everybody, it's Robert Cadenius with the Chatham County Public Information Office and I want to thank you again for checking out the chat today. Um, today we're joined by uh, my co-host, you know him as Sean Evans. Sean, how are you? I'm doing all right, Robert, how are you? I am good, I'm good for a Thursday. Um, we have a very important guest today that has a message everyone in the community really needs to hear because it's, it's resonating in every community in the country this issue of drugs and fentanyl and spin-offs of those drugs. He is the director of the Chatham Narcotics Team, uh, Director Michael Sarhat. Director, good to see you. How it's are you? It's a pleasure to be here, Rob. Thank, Thank you. you for having me and taking Thank you. time. Appreciate Sean, you, it's good to see you Thank again. You. Good having you here. We have uh, a lot to get to. Yes. You have a wealth of knowledge that we really want to tap into today and, and hopefully share a message to the community that is going to see this. But let's first start with um, talk about some of the current statistics that you're seeing that are that you guys are coming across. Your team is coming across that are impacting the county. So, um, you know, I became the director in October of 20. And um, since that time, we've been, um, the, the number of overdose deaths have, have slowly crept up. So we started statistically keeping track of it for various reasons. But um, so, for instance, last year um, uh, we had, and I've taken two of my investigators that that's all they do is, is go out and investigate these overdose deaths. So um, in 2021, we were we were contacted by the various departments uh, 76 times. My my two officers or agents went out and either, you know, got on the scene or we we had our hands in that investigation following the following the death. Mm -hmm. Of those, of those 76, uh, 72, 56 of those were were opioid related deaths. So the the tox screen came back and it was it was confirmed that that was the cause of death was due to an opiate, okay? So fast forward to this year. So we had 56 total last year. This year, um, uh, today as we sit in, uh, we're, we're, what, just into the first, se second quarter, mm -hmm. we're at 30 overdose deaths. Wow. Oh. And, and my uh, agents have been out, called out 36 times. So that number is alarming. It keeps going up. Um, and you know we, we've kind of tried to develop a, a, a comprehensive program from from the enforcement standpoint, um, from a uh, an education and awareness standpoint, and then a, a support for the families that you know uh, uh, afford and unfortunately have lost someone to to this scourge. Well, Director Sarhat, I do want to ask also about uh, poly drug dealers, and I think it might be self-explanatory, but I want to ask you what that is and what your agents are dealing with when they come across one. So one of the, one of the things that, that we're seeing pretty much on a daily basis now is you know, um, C&T is set up in such a way where, where we have a major case unit that digs in and, and, and really goes after an entire organization. Those are long-term investigations, okay? And then we have two tactical teams and, and they're out on the streets day in and day out. And they're executing search warrants and they're actively chasing, you know, um, uh, drug dealers. What we are seeing now is that every time we come in contact with one of these drug dealers, whether it's in a, a, a vehicle stop in a car, whether it's a search warrant, whatever, these drug dealers are selling everything. So, so hence the poly, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, very rarely will we start an investigation because someone is selling cocaine or someone is selling methamphetamine, and then we get to the culmination of that, and when we start seizing things, all we're seizing is what we thought we were purchasing or how we were conducting. Mm -hmm. That's what started the case. Mm -hmm. We're seeing marijuana, methamphetamine, cocaine, you know, fentanyl, pills, powder, that every drug dealer has a little bit of everything. It's a one-stop shop now. And that, that, that's been that way over the years. You know, I, I pretty much got in, um, in drug law enforcement in 1987. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you would see that, but there was always one, you know, one drug that that's what that person kind of specialized in. You know, that was right. their main, their main um, 
what they distributed mainly. Mm -hmm. And we're just not seeing that anymore. Hmm. Well, I which, mean, which, yeah. which, and the, the major concern for that is because this fentanyl is so powerful. The mixing. It, it, so whether, whether, uh, whether they're doing it on purpose or not, mm -hmm. the, you know, they, they store those in the same location. Right. And so you have um, uh, a high probability of cross-contamination. And that goes, that goes, you know, on marijuana. I mean, you have people smoking marijuana that it is contaminated with, with fentanyl. Now, whether they, that was done on purpose or whether it was accidental, um, uh, accidental because it's so, so close and, uh, and stored, I don't know. But the end, at the end of the day, people are smoking marijuana that could be laced with fentanyl. Well, obviously, fentanyl, major problem. Uh, but let's talk about some of the emerging threats that y'all are seeing here in Chatham County, things like kratom and, and nitazine. So, you know, here's, here's the problem with, um, that I foresee with the, with the kratom, okay? And, um, and there was another show on earlier today, and I saw, and I can't remember what the drug was, but it's over-the-counter and um, very much like kratom. Okay. So kratom, you can walk into any gas station, and buy kratom, okay? In in uh, in small doses, kratom is a stimulant. In, in larger doses, it acts just like an opioid, okay? Hmm. So you're going to have the effects of an opioid, and that opioid is addictive, mm -hmm. okay? So so anybody can walk in, buy this, become addicted, and then the next thing is they want something stronger, and then and then here here goes the downward spiral. It's a gateway. And and then and then we're roll and then they're rolling the dice right. because sooner or later they're going to come across either what they think is heroin or they think is a Percocet or an Oxy, and it's laced with fentanyl, and hence the deaths are increasing. Wow. Well. And then when it comes to nitazine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, understand this. What exactly is that? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's an opioid. It's a synthetic opioid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin. Okay. I, I'm not much for math, but it's 50 times more potent than heroin. Nitazine is 40 times more potent than fentanyl. Wow. Hmm. So when you talk about a fatal dose of fentanyl, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you are not, if you have not basically built up a tolerance over time, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. it's really three to five milliliters of fentanyl can kill you, mm -hmm. all right? You know, and, and I mean, I think everybody's probably already heard me talk about take the sweet and low pack, dump it out. That's one gram. Separate it into a thousand different piles. That's a that's a thousand milliliters, and take three or five of those. We'll take the high end of it. Tell take ten of them, mm -hmm. and move them off to the side, and that's what mm -hmm. could kill the average person that has not built up a resistance. So now you're talking about a drug. Nitazine mm -hmm. that is 40 times more potent mm -hmm. than fentanyl. So now take that 30, that thousand piles of uh, of fentanyl that you just divided into gram, mm -hmm. and, and and divide that by 40 times more, hmm. and then take 10 of those piles. Just just to give you a, an idea of how minute, mm -hmm. you know, we've had. Uniform police officers, first responders sure. that, that are not taking fentanyl, mm -hmm. they're not using fentanyl, they come in contact and, and they, they OD right there at the scene. That's how dangerous this stuff is. Where's the nitazine coming from? Um, I, I would assume it's, it, it's, much like, it, it's much like fentanyl, it's from overseas. Okay. You know, it, um, We've, we have not seen any nitazine here locally, okay. but we have seen it within the state. So it's kind of one of those matter of time things. I would, I, I hope and pray mm -hmm. that we never see the nitazine because it's so potent the drug dealers can't handle it. 
they don't know how to physically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can't. Wow. Wow. Well, and, and part of um, educating folks about the dangers of these drugs and, and potential new drugs being introduced into the community is your community outreach here in Chatham County. Uh, talk about the youth and adult awareness programs, and I know you would mentioned Rice Creek and Woodville. Yeah, correct? so, so um, I guess it would have been last Thursday, um, you know, a week or two weeks prior to that, one of the um, one of the private schools, St. Andrews, got in touch with me right. and said, "Hey, would you be willing to come out and and talk talk to the high schoolers?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Absolutely! You give me the time, I'm there. I'll I'll rearrange whatever I got to do to get to the kids." Mm -hmm. So we set up um, uh, last Thursday because Friday was their prom, mm -hmm. and so um, I worked closely with them we put together a program that they felt comfortable with that was age appropriate and all that and so Thursday morning I went in and um, gave the presentation um, uh, when I was done with that I went home very very pleased and relieved um, from the standpoint that I thought the country was in good hands on down the road because those were some good kids what was the feedback um, so uh, throughout throughout the presentation, I had several questions from the kids, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then at the end, the kids had some questions. Some of them were a little difficult, but you know, you you, you got to have the conversation, okay? Right. Right. And then afterwards, um, you know, I, I'm not the greatest speaker in the world. My presentations are pretty pretty bland and basic because I'm not you know. Com computer guy right <laughs> um, so I asked the, them I said hey I want an out an out brief from you guys and I need feedback because you know whatever and so they were very pleased with it and when I finished with that walked out there was a one or two teachers standing there and said hey I just want to let you know that um, after this the kids went to all of our classrooms and I I want you to know that they're still talking about it hmm. so I, put, I felt really really good about it yeah. okay and, and that's, the, that's the thing. There's a lot of ad campaigns out there. Um, uh, ad Council's got a campaign that, that I, I, I still get a little irritated that I wasn't the one that thought about it. Um, it's called Drop the F-Bomb. Hmm. Hmm. Talk about fentanyl with your kids. Yeah. What a classic. That's, that's okay? attention grabbing. A absolutely. Drop yeah, the F-Bomb. So, but, um, and then the following morning, um, one of the administrators sent me an email and thanked me and said, I just want to let you know, when I came in this morning, I had 50 emails from, from the kids' parents hmm. thanking them for bringing me in. Outstanding. So I, I thought that was a win. It's a win. Absolutely. Yep. Well, um, I want to talk now about enforcement efforts that your team's taking on and how it's impacting the county and, and the proliferation of drugs here in the community. So, um, you know, CNT is is really been designated um, as as the lead on on local or county drug law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're very very active. I can tell you that last night we went out and executed a search warrant on a case that had been going on, and we seized 176 grams of fentanyl. Wow. Okay. So we we are doing that on a daily basis. Hmm. All right. Um, you know, I want to get back to the to the education part of this. Sure. So, you, you brought up the two schools. So mm -hmm. I'm working. You know, I I think it's important that law enforcement steps out of the enforcement part of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 goes to the education table and goes to the, you know, we we need to be involved in that in one way, shape, or form. So, right. working very very closely with the uh, Savannah Chatham schools, um, uh, they they have been phenomenal. I, I, uh, the, the, the administration there sees the problem, sees the dangers, and, and, it, and is, have really with open arms allowed me to come in and, and, and give my whatever I can give them, okay? Yeah. So I just got an email this morning. We're, um, we're starting to do, um, I don't know if you want to call it a blitz, but I'm going to get around to as many of the schools that will, the uh, uh, public schools that they, they would want me to come in and give pretty much the same presentation that I did at St. Andrews. So mm -hmm. um, I'll be speaking at uh, uh, 
Woods, uh, Woodville, Thompson. Woodville, Thompson. Woodville Thompson and Rice Creek. Yep. And Rice Creek will be my first middle school. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to you know, kind of you know, rolling my sleeves up and, and meeting the kids and, and just having a conversation with them. Well, Rice Creek in um, a rapidly growing part of the county up in Port Wentworth. Do you see, and, and this is something just a, a little off script, but as our population grows here in Chatham County, do you see the need for enforcement growing as well? Just kind of a law of averages. The more people you have, the more chances you have for those substances spreading out into the community. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's just common sense. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, MIPD has got more people than we do. <laughs> they got more, they got more mm -hmm. people than yeah. police. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, it, 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 unfortunately, you know, Savannah is, it, is a booming little town. It's very, you know, it's a great place to live, and it's a great place for, for businesses, and and you know, with the with the port, and uh, now the the, um, uh, the meta plant going out. Yeah, all, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there, there's always, you know, you got the good, and then you got a little bad. You got transient too. And you got transient. So, yeah. you know, we'll 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 see, we'll see. Okay. Uh, fentanyl, back to fentanyl, the f bomb. Uh, the leading cause of death for 18 to 35 year olds. What message do you have for those folks, that age group, and for that matter, parents or guardians of those kids? And I know it probably links to your presentation in schools as well, but what message would you have for that age group that seems to be getting hit the hardest? Well, I think the, you know, the biggest message is um, y y you don't know. Mm -hmm. You do not know you're rolling the dice and um, you know pretty much you know 70 80 percent of all the pills that are seized on the street placed with fentanyl hmm. so wow. if you don't if you don't personally go to that pharmacist pick up your prescription open that bottle hmm. and take those pills if you get that pill from anywhere else other than your mom and dad you're rolling the dice and you cannot tell the difference. That's the big thing. Right. You can't tell the difference. Right. So what I did at the presentation is I had th two or three slides. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is uh, this is um, uh, this is our oxys. These are oxys. This is xylazine. This is Adderall. And I had a a, a, a real pill, mm -hmm. and then I had a fake pill. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, which one's real? Which one fake? I had the kids put their hands up. You know, whatever. And then I said, okay, now how many are you guessing? Because you can't tell, you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, everybody raised their hand, kind of put their hand up. They were guessing, right? All right. So I went through all that. About, about half of those people guessed properly. Hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I said, so we're going we're gonna to say, we're going to say everybody that raised their hand during this, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Now half of you, you, this half over here, put your hands down. Okay, this half over here, I want, okay, let me, uh, about 20% about of those people, put your hands down, those people aren't here today. Hmm. Because yeah. you can't tell the difference, 80%, mm -hmm. 70%, however many percent, it's a whole lot, you're dead. Wow. That's what I want the kids to know. You don't know, and they're lacing everything that's what i want the kids to know and the parents um let me ask you this director sarhat are you seeing the drugs that are within the community now already laced or are they being laced by these poly drug dealers that buy say just raw fentanyl and they mix it with stuff or are they buying stuff already laced that we're, are coming into the country we're seeing both Really? We're seeing both, okay? So um, uh, we're seizing, actively doing search warrants here in Chatham County and seizing pill presses. Hmm. So we'll seize a pill, you know, a pill press, powdered fentanyl, pills, methamphetamines. It's a lab. It, 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 it's more of a pill press. Mm-hmm. 
not a lab like back in the day where you had right. chemicals and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. okay? So these dyes, they're getting these dyes. You can go online, I want this dye, whatever, it gets shipped in from overseas, and that dye, that stamp that they put in that press, and you can't tell the damn difference. Can't do it. It's unbelievable. Can't it really do is. it. You know, um, you guys have a, well, I should say this, your team has, you know, a law enforcement arm and an outreach arm. Yes. How can folks get a hold of you all, educate themselves about the dangers of not only fentanyl, but any other illicit drug that's yeah. in the community? So um, you can always call CNT, you know, it's, it, it, you know, I don't know what the main number was, 652 3900, 652 3900, mm -hmm. okay? And somehow the receptionist, they'll get you to whoever you need to, mm -hmm. okay? But for the parents, you know, w w w everybody's got phones, everybody's on the internet. How about you type in fentanyl, okay? The Y is after the N, because it took me a while. You know, I was on when, when, I, when fentanyl first came out and I didn't know where the Y went, <laughs> okay? All right, because you know, I'm an old guy. So. Well, Type in fentanyl. And autocorrect doesn't catch it either. Right. You can, go to, you, you can go to DEA.gov. Mm -hmm. .gov. You got the Ad Council. Mm -hmm. There is, mm -hmm. you know, the CDC. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is tons of information out there to educate yourself and then go have the daggum conversation with your kid. Drop that F-bomb. Mm -hmm. Talk about fentanyl with the kids. You have a, a support group that you also yes. Matter of fact, about that. so um, you know the, these families that have lost somebody to an overdose death, it, it 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 is just it's really sad, right? Because they don't know where to go, they don't know where to turn, they don't know they really don't know what hit them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, and. Um, and then they find out it was a fentanyl overdose or it was an opioid overdose. And, you know, then you've got the stigma of it. And so, you know, I wanted to put together something that family members that were going through the same thing mm -hmm. could, could come together and support themselves. So um, the recovery place, um, uh, really jumped on board and so um that's right on abercorn that well that's that that's the that's the peer recovery place okay. on abercorn is where the meetings are held okay okay and um you can call my office also and we can get you directed to those folks um you know a lot of this stuff we're we're early on so like the cnt website you know i i haven't really gotten time to really beef that part up to to help people um you know, locally, uh, to use that as a resource that's coming. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that we have done is um, just recently, well, I guess it was several months back, um, we got an opportunity to bring uh, an organization down, Rally Trailers, and Rally came down, and they, they had a, like a 32-foot trailer that was decked out with a uh, kid's bed, a teenager's bedroom, mm -hmm. and all the red flags. And, and I walked in that and went, I'm getting one of these. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I hope to have that and have it built out by August, start a mm -hmm. school year. Sure. And then we're going to start we're going to start toting that around all the PTA events. We're going to get to, you know all, if if a business says hey we'd like you to bring it out and let let our employees look at it. We're more than welcome. You know, we'll be happy to do that. You know we we got to get it out. We got to educate the parents, mm -hmm. and then you know we got to have the conversation with the kids. It's as simple as that. Certainly. We're going to put uh, some contact information at the end of the podcast, so make sure you stick around for that, Sean. We could talk Director Sarhad all day. Uh, do you have any other questions? I think we covered a, a lot of the main points. And again, just highlighting the threat and how dangerous these drugs coming into the community and your efforts, your team's efforts to stop that. Flow. Well, I, I appreciate you guys having me in. Mm -hmm. Okay, it means, it, you know, it means a lot. And, and because at the end of the day, you know, you guys are part of the COG. And, and you guys are the ones that are going to help, you know, get that word out. And so it's, I, I'm very thankful that you guys 
you know, brought me in to do this. Anything we missed, Director, that you like to add that folks should know about? No, I, I, I think not. I mean, you're, you're right. I could sit here and talk. It's, it, you know, you, you, you've, you know, it's a passion of mine because it we're is. just losing, we're losing our, we're, we're losing our a whole gener generation. You know, we are. But I tell you what, when I went into that St. Andrews and I saw those kids and they were dialed in, I, I went home. I said, yeah, "We're going to be all right." That's that's what makes it worthwhile. Yeah, is we're to see right. that reaction by right. them. Um, again, thank you for taking the time out yeah, of your absolutely. day. absolutely. I know that you're busy. Your team's busy. Um, for Director Michael Sarhat, my co-host Sean Evans, I'm Robert Katniss. We'll see you next time on the chat.